Hey, Stizor. I, I find your videos very, very, uh, very entertaining. I get a kick out of them. Like, one plus one equals two, I mean three. But it could be any number three, but it is three. <laughs> and, you know, somebody could interpret that as some sort of numerological statement. But I know what you're doing. I'm, I'm on to you. You are using mathematics as a metaphor, which what is modern science if not the use of mathematics as a metaphor? So I think I understand. We might get back to that later. I want to nitpick a little just because I, I really I want to find out what you're meaning by some of these things. Because it's kind of a poetical enough way of putting it. I can interpret it in a way I agree with, but I'm kind of more curious what you're really asserting, how far it goes. Now, my nitpick is it isn't energy and matter, per se, interacting. It's energy and other energy. Now, the energy is at, well, let, we could call them levels. One of the levels of energy is when it's bound into massive particles. But it's still energy. So it's really energy interacting with energy. Right. So I'm curious what you have to say about that, if you acknowledge that nitpick. Now, on the other thing is the atom is alive. Now... I make the point all the time that I believe in will, and I'm a materialist, so the element of will will have to be in the matter. The matter will have to have some element that when it, it all comes together, there have to be a will, like, you know, for there to be magnetism and a macroscopic object, it's, there had to be, you know, an element of magnetism in the, in the particles. It turns out all the particles are magnetic, who'd have thunk that, but anyway, well, not all of them, but pretty much all of the atoms are okay so i'm curious what you're talking about is that what you're talking about that you know the atoms in some sense have will maybe they can't exercise it maybe there's no reason for them to they don't have complicated enough systems their system isn't at a level uh, in which it, it there's any way for it to express that as will that we would recognize thus it is what we call an emergent property um, coming from the fact that uh, it seems fundamentally different when it's in this particulate nature. Is that what you're talking about? If so, I agree with that, but maybe that's not what you're talking about. Now, here's where I think I differ from you. You said there had to be a third thing. Well, I think it's already energy interacting with energy, so that's one thing. But the interaction, is that what you're talking about? There has to be a third way. You also mentioned, oh, something had to create it, had to come from somewhere, but I know you don't believe in God, but... but um, that there had to be some other, because I'm not sure about that anymore. You know, um, all the matter is energy. Energy can change forms. So you can always break things down into multiple concepts. So there's energy in the form of energy. But now, what about this concept about the way things interact separate from the energy that's doing the interacting? Well, it's weird because as you pointed out, it gets really weird uh, when you look at the math and physics uh, and modern physics. But energy is, you know, is change, right? It's, it's a force of change. So we detect it. It's all what it's about. So even there, there seems like a unification, a material unification, right? We can assign as many ideas as we want to these things to split them down. But the material component looks like it could be energy because energy is not only the thing. It's also the way that things are interacting. So there's nothing but this, this weird thing that it isn't really like a thing in the traditional idea of a little BB that's a thing. But it is the change as well. So it's the thing and the change. The energy is the matter. The matter is the energy. The interaction is also energy, transfer. But, you know, you can break it down into, okay, well, but there's time. You know, the energy has to play this game out in time. So there's time and energy. And so there's some material component of, of time. And yet it looks like time is just energy in yet another form. You know, Higgs bosons or space and time or whatever. I mean, that's the direction things are going, right? So it's quite possible that all there is is energy. And it's kind of a whole on kind of a concept where... You know, it plays the role of the thing. It plays the role of the rules that, that change the thing. It plays all of these roles. And so really is there's just energy. And uh, so there's a, a one universal in that sense. So everything's energy. That leaves the, the, the 
the issue of me as a relative is that, wait a second, there's all this multiplicity. And there's this one thing, we all have our own frames of reference. But that's the beauty. Because of the transformation, the energy has so many different forms. You know, so many different forms that it can take. I mean, there's not just the particles and quantum mechanics, there's also the potential energy of things sitting on this desk. And there's, you know, so that it could take just perhaps infinite number of forms, this energy. And that's where we get the multiplicity of the universe. So we have this ability to break things down into their common, you know, element, universal, at least within some domain. And as a materialist, basically, yeah, I mean, the domain of all the universe that's part of the universe we're in. I, there could be another universe, though, and that's, that's the out, but it's, it's pretty tiny little out, basically. Everything being energy, that's why we can reduce things down, or at least it's metaphorical to why we can reduce things down. But energy taking infinite forms means that there's still going to be an infinite number of different type things because they're very different. The potential energy I mentioned of these objects on this table that I'm sitting at, you know, it's fundamentally different from, you know, the energy of, uh, you know, in, in, in electricity and the energy uh, in a massive particle and so on and so forth. So anyway, if you could straighten those out, it's, it's the question of, one, saying there's energy and matter. I can more carefully say there's energy interacting with energy. The question about 1 plus 1 equaling 3, is that a mathematical metaphor for the fact that there's something else? Is the third thing, is that, does it relate to this third thing, and do you really want to argue that we need a third thing? In reality, I'm saying I think we can go down to, to one bundled up thing that's inherently complex. So it has an infinite number of features or properties, but in reality, it, there's still a unification. So it's both, you know, it's both unified and impossible to unify. Uh, it never gets unified, it could just be transition. And then the last thing is when you talk about uh, consciousness as the atom, I, I don't use the word consciousness because I don't think atoms have consciousness, but there has to be some elemental um, fundament of will for will to express itself and emerge. And is that what you're saying or something like that? All right, cheers.